There once was a guy named Albert Einstein, who you have probably heard of, and he developed the equation E equals MC squared, which you have probably heard of also. Using this equation, the relationship between mass and energy can be calculated using the speed of light, which is a universal constant. The value for the speed of light is exactly 299,792,458 meters per second. Now this is the maximum speed at which matter and information can travel in the universe. But how did scientists determine the speed of light? Philosophers in ancient Greece were the first to think about and debate the speed of light. Way back in the 5th century BCE, Empedocles made the first claim that light had a finite speed. Aristotle, however, disagreed and said that light was instantaneous. Euclid and Ptolemy thought that light came from the eyes, which is what enabled sight. This would seem to imply that light must have an infinite speed, which allows us to see really distant objects like stars immediately upon opening our eyes. Over a thousand years later, the Islamic philosopher Al-Hazin proposed that light actually travels from an object into our eyes, and therefore light has a finite speed. Like 600 years later, really smart people like Johann Kepler and Rene Descartes were saying that the speed of light must be infinite because there is nothing in empty space to slow it down, and during a lunar eclipse, the sun, earth, and moon should be out of alignment, which had never been observed. So for more than 2,000 years, the debate as to whether the speed of light was finite or infinite raged on. The problem thus far was that no one had developed an experiment that showed that light either arrived instantaneously or whether it took some time reaching its destination. But that was about to change. In 1629, Isaac Beckman proposed an experiment in which observers watched the flash of a cannon being reflected off of mirrors at different distances from the blast. The observers were then to tell whether the flashes arrived at different times. The problem was the mirrors were not far enough apart so the experiment was inconclusive. Galileo came up with another experiment in order to determine the speed of light, in which two people with lanterns would stand a mile apart and take turns flashing each other with the take turns flashing each other with the lanterns, and then determine if there was a lag in the amount of time it took that light to reach them. There actually would have been a delay in this experiment of about 11 microseconds, which is way too fast for our feeble human senses to detect. So again, the results were inconclusive. It wasn't until 1676 that someone would finally prove the speed of light wasn't infinite. That someone was the Danish astronomer Ole Romer. Romer was studying Io, the moon of Jupiter, and its orbit around the planet, which took place every 1.76 days. Knowing this, Romer believed he could precisely predict the motion of Io, but he couldn't. He noticed sometimes Io seemed to be behind schedule, while other times it seemed to be ahead of schedule. But what was causing this apparent change in Io's orbit? Well, after thinking about it for a while, Romer noticed that the moon of Jupiter seemed to be behind schedule when Earth and Jupiter were farther apart in their orbit, and ahead of schedule when they were closer together. It wasn't that Io was changing its orbit at all, it was that it took light less time to reach Earth when Jupiter was closer, and more time when it was farther away. This must mean that light has a finite speed. But at the time, there were still a lot of doubters who believed that light was instantaneous. But like any great theory, Romer could use it to make predictions, and predict he did. He let his colleagues know that on November 9th, 1676, Io's eclipse would happen 10 minutes later than they expected. When the time finally came, they were astonished to see the eclipse happen, just as Romer foretold. And using what Romer figured out, the Dutch scientist Christian Huygens was able to calculate the speed of light to be 220 million meters per second. Whoa, but wait! We learned earlier that the speed of light was 299,792,458 meters per second. I mean, that's a good first attempt to know, but we still haven't answered our question. How did scientists determine the speed of light? Well, the centuries that followed saw many scientists performing many different experiments from James Bradley in 1729 using the effect of stellar aberration to calculate a speed of 301 million meters per second 
to Albert Mickelson in 1879 using rotating mirrors to calculate a speed of 299,900,000 meters per second. But it wasn't until the 70s, the 1970s, that lasers finally made it possible to start nailing down the speed of light. We all know lasers make everything better, duh, and using lasers, the speed of light was determined to be 299,792,456.2 meters per second? A decimal? Are you kidding me? Well, believe it or not, in 1983, the definition for the meter was actually redefined so that the speed of light could be a whole number. And that whole number is 299,792,458 meters per second. The speed of light as we know it today. So that's how scientists determined the speed of light. You see, that's the cool thing about science. Even if it takes years or decades or even centuries to answer the questions we have about the natural world, no matter how impossible they seem, there's no better way to go about finding those answers than with science. So stay curious, keep asking questions, and continue exploring the world around you. Because there's no telling what discoveries still await us just around the corner. Thanks for watching.